All right, welcome to our 11th episode of Tac Talk. I am your host, Aldemore. So we're going to jump in right into this episode. I do uh, utilize social media for a lot of questions when it comes to the show. And uh, I guess to generate topics for the show. And one thing that I've been asking myself for the last couple of weeks uh, is, can we arrest our local politicians for violation of the Constitution or just plainly not doing their job or... Uh, at least have them impeached or removed from office. <clears throat> and the reason why I ask this is because in the last few weeks, not only did we have 1691 pass uh, by a majority Democratic vote, uh, which, again, we're a republic, not a democracy, uh, just in case you're a Democrat and you're listening to this, just because you vote for 60% of the population to ban cell phones doesn't mean you can ban cell phones. So just because you vote for guns to be off the streets or type of gun parts or whatever, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, and since then, since that quote passing unquote of 1691, we've had four bills go through uh, to the House floor, uh, pushed and backed by Bob Ferguson on the orders of our Governor Jay Inslee. So, <clears throat> let me just clarify. Our Attorney General, our highest lawmaker in the state, Bob Ferguson, has pushed SB 5062, HB 1068, S HB 1286, and SB 5340 through the floor. And those four bills are basically duplicate bills of two different things that they want to happen. They want to pretty much uh, end the sales and trade and even the dis destruction of any, any type of semi-automatic weapon. Uh, which they define under their own terms, as well as they want to ban I, all high-capacity magazines. Now, <laughs> so they can't obviously punish the criminals. They can't obviously stop criminal activity. So they're going to punish every law-abiding citizen in order to uh, keep the criminals in power? I don't know. Uh, but who else seems to be back in this bill through political stunts and public relations stunts is also Lieutenant Governor Habib. Now, he's a blind man, uh, and I'm not against, again, I'm not against the handicapped. I've got handicapped members in my own family. However, I don't see how he could be doing his job if he's freaking blind. I mean, one of the things he did was uh, he refused, and I didn't say, re and, I, and I say refused, I don't mean like he couldn't show up. I mean, he refused to show up to a speech because he was afraid that someone with a concealed carry permit would be inside the uh, Olympia Capitol. Now... He didn't have any type of threat against him. There was no death wish against him. There was nothing against him. Absolutely nothing against him. Yet, he refused to go just because you as a private citizen, you who has the ability to carry your weapon concealed to protect yourself and those around you, might have been at the Olympia Capitol. He refused to go. So it's, you know, they did, this, they did the same kind of thing, the same kind of uh, attack against blacks. During the Jim Crow's laws, you know, like, I won't go in that bathroom or use that sink just because a black man used it. Well, now they're doing it to us. Concealed carry permits. And I have a lot of friends who are black who have their own concealed carry permits. And <laughs> it's just it's just discrimination all over again for a different reason. Now, who else is involved is our governor, Jay Inslee. So, Jay Inslee, our governor, ordered Bob Ferguson, our attorney general, to push these bills with the backing of both their support while simultaneously Lieutenant Governor Habib uh, made a pu public or political stunt about how he can't go in the chambers because people might have a concealed weapons permit. Which is ridiculous in my eyes, sorry. Um, moving on to the question that I have that I posted onto my personal social media is can we make a citizen's arrest against these three individuals? That's the question. Can we arrest Bob Ferguson, Jay Inslee, and Habib for... Wasting taxpayer money, discriminatory uh, actions against the people that they're served and sworn to protect and uphold the laws here in the state, as well as uh, not doing their job and pushing anti-constitutional bills so on both two levels, state constitution and national constitution. So uh, your feedback would be appreciated. If so, let's get this organized. Let's get it organized where we can get the local sheriff involved and we can actually get a judge that you know seems to agree with us and more right-wing political or Republican judge, I guess. Someone who's tired of their crap. And let's get arrest warrants out for them. Uh, they are on our dime. They're not on their own dime. We have every right to throw them out. Vote it or not. So, <clears throat> moving on. 
we got about a minute left in this first segment. Then we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to be right back. Uh, well, I wanted to mention Beast Combat Systems was down at SHOT Show 2019. There was an amazing amount of new products out. I myself was not able to make it. However, uh, the company owner was able to make it, which is awesome because I was able to get a lot of pictures sent back to me to see what was going on down there and to be able to share that to the social media for the Beast Combat Systems Facebook and Instagram page. One of the things I wanted to share was that... Uh, They've got their new drone killer uh, weaponry out, which is pretty cool. Sastava has come out with new uh, uh, AK-47s and AK-74s. It looks like CAA Gear Up and Hartman have new uh, uh, products out when it comes to their new generation Micaroni, as well as they've made some improvements, it looks like, on their Hartman optics. As well as uh, Kanashikov USA was there. Now, Kanashikov USA is excuse me, an interesting one because they've been in production for quite a few years now. Uh, back since like 2015 or 2016, I can recall. And uh, four years later, they have another booth at SHOT Show. I have yet to see a significant amount of their sales movement or volume. Yet, they've got some interesting saiga based platforms as well as AK-47 type platforms. So that's something I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while. So Konoshikov USA. Since Mikhail Konoshikov passed away a couple years ago, uh, the Americans were able to get the patent rights to uh, mill and stamp receivers here in the United States. So... Uh, that's one of the things that says uh, Russian ingenuity, ingenuity or whatever, and American made. So, and then another one I want to share is this Halo type gun. This is really cool. It's called the Smart Slide, and it's a round counter. And so, when you have a magazine inside it, it looks like a Glock. Um, it tells you exactly how many rounds are. If you've got ten rounds, you discharge one. Nine rounds, discharge one. Eight rounds, you take the magazine out. It'll literally tell you no magazine. I thought that was cool. Kind of a reminder of the throwback days of Halo. Uh, Halo 1 back on the original Xbox when you had all those rifles and only two of them counted your round count that was always pretty cool and I get and we and that one of the things I loved about this topic I want to go over the segment time a little bit for this the the I had my cousin Josh and I we were take, checking this product out and uh, I swear it's going to cost starting around 1500 uh, and that's because in the back of the, the slide there you got an LCD screen uh, that obviously is going to need to be charged in some way and has potential to break because of the repercussions of that shooting that slide with the, with the smart with the LCD screen on it. He swears it's not going to cost more than $800. So, in retrospective terms, I hope he's right because it's less money that I'm going to have to spend. However, I'm pretty familiar with firearms and I pretty much can, you know, I, I'm pretty confident in certain prices and things like that. So... I don't see this thing being cheap for a while unless until it's commercially made, you know, on a wide availability. So, uh, when we get back, we're going to talk about the government shutdown ending, uh, temporarily or partially, whatever that means. And then we're going to talk about the sub-zero temperatures in the Midwest that's going on over there. I have a sister in Minnesota, uh, so I do want to throw out some things out there, some cautionary advice and things like that. But, so then, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Talk Tack Talk episode 11. I'm your host, Alden Morris. Thanks for listening. Bees Combat Systems at BeesCombatSystems.com. Protecting those who prepare. 801-987-0893. For custom body armor carriers and tactical gear for military, law enforcement, contractors, corporate security, responsible citizens, and border patrol. Bees Combat Systems at BeesCombatSystems.com. 801-987-0893. Okay, we're back. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, before we talk about the government shut the shutdown ending, quote unquote ending, and the sub zero temperatures in the Midwest, I do want to share this article or this uh, news clip uh, from Coin Six News. It looks like. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure where they're from, but it's about Washington State and our recently passed bills. It uh, was published January 3rd, 2019. Go ahead, take a listen. Bill passed in Washington State, and now some are saying they found a loophole. Our Cole Miller joins us live with more on this and the language that they're specifically pointing to. Cole? Yeah, guys, we're talking about I-1639, that law requiring secure gun storage, enhanced background checks, and most notably raising the age requirement to purchase a semi-automatic rifle to 21. Now, while most of it went into effect on Tuesday, one gun store owner says she's going to continue to... Now, mind you, it's not one gun store owner. It's several throughout the state. One's getting the most media attention. However, it is several through the state. Sell to those 18 and older, and here's why. 
whoever wrote this, I think, made a mistake. At Linwood Gun, just north of Seattle, Tiffany Teasdale is trying to make sense of Initiative 1639, a strict gun control measure recently passed in Washington State. It bars anyone under the age of 21 from buying a semi-automatic rifle. But Teasdale says while some parts of that new law have gone into effect, the definition of a semi-automatic rifle has not that doesn't happen until the 1st of July. To me, it's clear as day that an 18 to 20 year old can technically buy, purchase, whatever of a semi-automatic assault rifle because these are not semi-automatic assault rifles until July 1st. And she is right. I've, uh, well, I'm in communication with Tiffany here and uh, she's going to be on the show Talk Talk. We just got to schedule it when she's done with all this political propaganda here going on, trying to attack her from all corners of the, corners of the United States. Um, but continue listening. And now she worries by not selling to anyone 18, 19, or 20, she would be breaking a different law through age discrimination. What we have is we have a kind of a bold pattern of we're not quite sure because from what we read, yes, we can hand up the firearm, but we want to make sure that all of our ducks are in a row. In a statement, the Washington Alliance for Gun Responsibility says, quote, it is no mystery which gun sales are affected by the change in purchase age included in the initiative, regardless of the effective date of the definition of semi-automatic assault rifle. Defying the law is a disingenuous attempt to thwart the will of the people and undermine the rule of law in our state. As for Teasdale, she's asked the state's attorney general for clarification but says she has yet to hear back. I'm no attorney. I'm not claiming to be an attorney. I am reading this exactly as it is written. Now, supporters of 1639 say it is designed to curb gun violence and make communities more safe, but some ha! are already pushing back in the form of a federal lawsuit. Jeff Jennifer claiming it violates both Second and 14th Amendment rights. Back to you. All right, and so, yeah, that's where we're at right now. We're still dealing with the whole I-1639. Uh, excuse me if I said 1631 in the first segment, but it is like 1639. We're dealing with this on multiple fronts. We actually had a rally for our rights at the state capitol not too long ago. And the shitty thing about that is uh, it was on a Friday morning when uh, our legislators were actually in office working, and yet they closed the doors of the chambers because, again, Lieutenant Governor Habib, the acting governor, while Governor Jay Inslee is gone, is, uh, is a pussy and should be arrested and should be fired for not being able to do his job properly and think about the taxpayer dollars we'll save on having to have the extra hands-on help for a blind man who can't even read his own paperwork so no offense to anybody who's blind out there i just don't think that if you're going to be blind and running as lieutenant governor and being against my firearm rights that you have any right to be in office so at that point we can save money by by sacking your ass and uh we can get someone who actually is more level-minded in there uh, so the government shut down. Trump temporarily ended it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a big, I'm not really into this topic as much as a lot of people are. Uh, it doesn't really phase me that much. Either way, it's gonna, you know, even if there is a wall, we're still gonna suffer from the fact that people are still gonna be getting over here through, you know, human trafficking and child trafficking. Drugs, I think the war on drugs is a completely anti-constitutional law. I think it's very... I think the whole war on drugs should end. Drugs should be privatized, and uh, you'd have a lot less deaths from accidental overdoses because people would be more educated on their drugs. Uh, we've seen it here with the marijuana here in Washington State. Um, the only people who really lost out were business owners and drug dealers. So if you laundered your money into a legal position, your legal money into a legal position, then you're fine. But uh, again, my personal belief is the war on drugs should be ended. The government shutdown has temporarily ended. All I care about is that the government shutdown has temporarily ended. That I can take my Discover Pass here in Washington State and go down to the state national parks and my you know private land areas where I can do my videos for Beast Combat Systems when it comes to firearms related activity. So that's that's all I care about is being able to, uh, being able to have access to my state national parks. Now, there are some zero temperatures happening in the Midwest. I've actually been reading random reports of, uh, for example, just, I think it was today or yesterday, a child uh, left home after an argument with his parents and was found dead in these temperatures. I've, I'm hearing below 40, 50 degrees, those kinds of things. Now, the reason why I bring it up is because if you're traveling, be safe. If you happen to live in those areas, be safe. I've got my own sister that lives in those areas. Caution to the wind, be safe, just be safe. So stay indoors. Don't go to work if you can't. If you don't have to, the whole the whole thing. So, but I'm gonna we're gonna end uh, this episode. Stay tuned this week. We're gonna have a busy week. 
Um, we got a lot of information to share with you guys this week. I got a lot of interviews to complete. I got a lot of uh, a lot of episodes to plan. So I want you guys to give me your feedback on some of the information I shared, especially when it comes to the rest of Bob Ferguson, Lieutenant Governor Habib, and our Governor Jay Inslee. Again, what's your feedback? What are your thoughts? How do you feel? Do you think that a citizen's arrest is completely possible? So if not, let's get the sheriffs involved. Let's get some kind of judge involved. Let's write up that warrant. Let's do this. So that's my call to action for today. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow.